more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Bavarians is for your man and you too. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg Scott and Dan. That is us. Welcome in, everybody. We are the Unfiltered Gentleman. Thanks for listening and joining, and most importantly, thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. Over there is Scott. Tino. And that is Dan. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. Ed. Yeah. <laughs> we were having a discussion of crank anchors before we started the show, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it's worn off. Uh, we got a lot to get to, but I will tell you that our burp word of the week is fresh beers. Fresh beers. We'll talk about that in crotch talk. Uh, shout out to Oxford, Massachusetts. Oh, shit. Whoa. Top listening city of last week, Oxford, Mass. Thank you, you mass holes, for listening <laughs> yeah. to the show. There you go. It was all that White Castle talk. Oh, oh. Yeah. Got the East Coast involved. Could have been. Yeah. Uh, anybody from uh, Oxford, Mass, I don't know if they have White Castle in Massachusetts. I assume they do because it's the East Coast. Uh, let us know what you guys think of White Castle at the yeah. un- at Unfiltered Gents on uh, Twitter there. Let us know. Um, don't forget to hashtag show us your beers Tag us in your beer pictures as well Rate and subscribe to uh, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify However you listen to your podcast Make sure you rate and subscribe us on there uh, Alright, before we get into everything Let's get into the most important thing And that of course is the beer of the week Grab your libations, pals oh. It's time for beer of the week and if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer We are having ourselves a Paul Paul? Paul, that's the name of the beer, Paul It's from New Image Brewing It's a New England Pale Ale 5% 85 IBUs Pretty high for a pale ale Yeah, no kidding And a 3.88 on Untapped Nothing on Beer Advocate Dan's checking out the uh, yeah the clarity. murkiness yeah a little murky uh, from the brewery they say I dreamed I was in a forest having a picnic as I'm about to eat my ham sandwich a deer bounds into the thicket startling both of us the sunlight glinted off his thick handlebar mustache thick rimmed glasses and manicured antlers we both stared he said hey have you seen some keys I shook my head the rental car company is going to be pissed he murmured as he walked away when I awoke. I made this delicious, hazy, Vermont-style pale ale and named it Paul Wow, because it made sense at the time. (laughs) I want what he's having. Right? No kidding. What did he have besides the beer? Yeah, more than just beer, clearly. Agreed. Yeah. Sounds like some spicy nuggets are involved. (laughs) Late night. Yeah, when you eat those at like 2 in the morning. Yeah, you have the weirdest dreams. Like me and pizza late night. Handlebar mustache deers. Yeah. True that. Do you think it's the spicy nugs at two in the morning that make you have the weird dreams, or is it what caused you to want the spicy nugs at two in the morning? It's <laughs> a fair question. Yeah. That's a fair question. It's like what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's true. Yeah. Anyways, back to the beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is pretty good. This drinks real nice and easy, real clean, even though it is a little murky. Um, get some fruits on the nose. Yeah, uh, it's got that juiciness that you'd expect out of a New England style something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning how to drink for the first time. <laughs> you know, I was about to mention too, I was, and now I, maybe I feel warranted. It's almost validated <laughs> wow. by this. But I was going to say it's pretty well carbonated. For it is very good. You know, <laughs> it went up the nose. <laughs> and now I feel validated. I was like, why would that? Oh my don't god! Say it. it sounds stupid. <laughs> And then you went and choked on it. And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I'm right. I'm onto something here. <laughs> it wasn't even a ch- It went right up my nose. <laughs> I'm telling the you. effervescence. Uh-huh. Yeah, very uh, well carbonated. It just traveled upward instead of down. And uh-huh. it just made me hold it. <laughs> I'm glad you all got to share that with yeah. me. You and uh, you're listening in your car or whatever. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's what I get from it, too. You can really yeah. get a lot of those bubbles. And yeah. It's like, real carbonated. Real tasty, though. Mm-hmm. Really easy to put down. Mm-hmm. The carbonation kind of helps uh, clean it up a little bit. Correct. Uh, all right, so that is Paul uh, from New Image Brewing. Uh, a lot of carbonation in Paul. 
All right, let's get into uh, some crotch talk over here. I have a grievance to share. It's time for a crotch talk. <laughs> um, so we talked about the wedding, the big day, last week. And I heard from our friend of the show, Brian, who's yeah. been on a couple times, mm-hmm. uh, a very funny story that I hope he doesn't get mad at me for sharing. <laughs> the good news, Brian, is everyone involved does not listen to this show. Yay. So take solace in that. I have to say, while I was there, he was not sans clothes. Oh, thank God. Yeah. yeah. But I, I left early, so. I was uh, a little afraid. Yes. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was petrified. <laughs> so, Brian tells me the story of being in the bathroom. First, we should set up a little bit. Uh, speeches the night of the wedding came from both Shannon and uh, the wife's co-matron of honors, uh, my best man, her dad, and my mom. Those were the speech givers. Her first matron of honor was a little windy, yeah. as they say. Uh, she went on for quite a while, a surprisingly long amount of time. I have not watched the video yet to see how long it was. If I had to guess, I would say over 10 minutes for sure. Probably 13 to 15 minutes would be my guess. Uh, maybe. I would say, yeah, up over unders at 10. Okay, we'll, we'll say 10 to be safe, mm-hmm. which is a long time. Especially when none of it was written down. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. Uh, it was 10 minutes of how in love with my wife she was. <laughs> uh, not to mention she's married. So uh, you're going to have to decide there. But uh, so anyways, that's the backstory. Friend Brian says uh, to me, have you heard anything from the matron of honor? I said, what mm-hmm. do you mean? He goes, well... <laughs> So he's in the bathroom and he's waiting for the urinal and he's talking. I forget who he's talking to. And he, after her speech, he says to this person, Jesus, you think she's going to kill Greg and take Shannon for herself? <laughs> <laughs> Out of the stall walks her husband. Oh, <laughs> And and I guess he knew who his husband because as soon as he saw him, he was just like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> He's like, "It was totally a joke, but oh my god!" I should have gave him a little salute, like, "Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. That was me." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved it so much. I, I thought that was hilarious. He's he was like, he felt bad. I was like, "Do not feel bad, man. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that is a good one." She went on for a while, and most of the story was how much she loved my wife or how much good times they had and all this other stuff. Correct. And yeah. it, I could see where he would come up with that premise. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of felt that way too, just listening to it. I was like, whoa, man, like I get it. Like that's the the basis I got. Is she really loves Shannon and and she's right too. Sure. Shannon's a great person, but hey, so are you, man. Like, you know, and that was not said, I don't feel like, or if it was, it wasn't touched on enough. At least not by her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and look, whatever, we don't, not everyone has to love everybody and that's fine. It's just, mm-hmm. you, when you give a speech at a wedding, it's usually about the couple. Exactly. <laughs> as well as the person that you're in love with yeah so uh but yeah when brian told me that stuff i i died i hope he doesn't mind he i didn't actually ask him if i could talk about it on the show but no. i just thought that's an appropriate wedding story uh for how the night went yeah and, and it's funny because i feel like some of the best stories are like told from the bathroom of the <laughs> yeah. wedding for whatever reason you know and yeah. not in a dirty way either usually it's just some funny ass shit that happens could be dirty way also yeah like one time uh, uh someone at us that was at a wedding and they were uh talking about like i guess they were taking a dump or something with their their brother was in the stall with them next door sure like dude flush that shit he was like no man they're like laughing and just like letting it just like air out and then like these kids came in and were washing their hands they're like what's that smell oh, God. and they're telling the story to us and then like you hear out of the, from another stall it's a big bathroom it says hey kids that's what you call the bomb <laughs> and then the kids just run out and as they're telling the story this guy comes out and he goes hey that was me that said that was like oh shit oh god <laughs> it was like hilarious man oh that is funny <laughs> you know while we're talking about the speeches and, and how in love with my wife that her matron of honor was instead of you know me i guess Mm -hmm. not in love with me but instead of us being a couple i guess she's gonna murder me and take her uh (laughs) one of my favorite quotes of the night came from the wife's dad who gave a very drunken speech (laughs) and in part of it uh he admitted to us later that he pre-gamed the wedding i was like did you not think that we of all people would have enough booze at the fucking wedding that you had to pre-game right whatever uh in the speech he goes on to say, and we don't really know Greg that much, but uh, it seems like he makes her happy, so that's good. 
That was as much mention as I got from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. It's like, well, we're going to keep it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, that was hilarious. So, yeah, good good job, Brian. Yeah. Thanks for embarrassing yourself for our, uh, <laughs> our amusement. It was funny. Yeah, I'm surprised he blurted that out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, anybody. Cannot remember who he was telling that to, but uh, I'll have to find out, because, God, that's so good. Yeah. Out walks her husband. Yeah. Which, now we know her husband was dropping a deuce at our wedding. Hey. While well, she's giving a speech. While well, she's giving, well, yeah. after, after, probably. I guess it was so long, he had to run <laughs> in the bathroom <laughs> afterwards. I can't hold it anymore. Yeah, so. Oh, man. Um, what else? Oh, I want to give a huge shout to uh, Colin Gray over at thepodcasthost.com. I entered a contest of sorts and won. I've never, I don't really win contests, but I won this contest. I have this sweet new Rode, which is a, a microphone brand, a very nice microphone brand, Rode Procaster. It's like a $200 microphone that I won. So uh, you're not listening to me out of it yet. I haven't had a chance to really dial it in, but uh, just think pretty soon you'll get to hear this sexy voice wow out of a really expensive microphone it's gonna be awesome yes it is yeah, you guys are gonna be over there just sitting just there with boners the cheap whole time ass yeah it's it's too bad <laughs> <laughs> too bad that we're gonna have to pitch in for at least one i think you can share it between the two of you yeah we'll trade in these three sure. for one yeah okay yeah <laughs> i don't think these three will add up to even a half <laughs> oh no, man i i hate to tell you you gotta win two more i i guess so yeah i'll do my best okay uh to see what i can do about that uh, and then finally, the reason our bird board of the week is fresh beers is because I want to tell everybody the great news. I've had twins. Wow. I bought a two-tap kegerator. Oh, nice. man. Yes. I'm so proud. Ooh. Yeah. Had some kegs left over after the wedding. And I was like, what am I going to do with these? So I think I discussed it last show. Got one of those party taps and was pumping them and uh, got tired of doing that. Costco had a two-tap kegerator on sale, $100 off. It's a great deal. Bought it. Oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. It is. It's so nice. I can co-sign that. Yeah, I was telling you guys before the show, like the other, night, other day we were cleaning up the this weekend and we we're cleaning up and I was like, God, we had to leave in a few minutes. I like, I really just want like half a beer. Oh wait, I can do that now. <laughs> no, I can have man. half a beer. I'm going to do that after the show actually. Have half a beer? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, it's great for having or a beer half and a half. Or beer and a half yeah. or uh, any, <laughs> any not... <laughs> full beer that you'd like to have it's yeah. great i mean it's great for full beers too yeah uh so uh i i have a kegerator you'll be seeing lots of slow-mo videos on instagram now <laughs> of it pouring because wow. that's set to porn music i mean really let's be honest oh, yeah. Come on. yeah yeah so uh that's Ooh. that's it for me anybody else anything for crotch talking me wants to share mm, are we, no are we doing good yeah Glad I just, it's kind of a crotch talk slash uber uh-huh but it's really sure it's just the guy that kept farting in my car holy yeah. shit well, not quite. Well, not, yeah. <laughs> Holy no, shark. No, maybe yeah, it was. I, shark, I, yeah. I, I actually checked the seat to make sure there was a stain. Was that asshole. bad? Well, he only, from what I heard, I only heard two of them. But the first one, I'm like, oh, no, it wasn't a fart. He just, you know, maybe, the, I have rubber mats, so maybe he just, like, yeah, slid his, his feet. His foot was but, squeaking around. Yeah, the next one, we are stopped, actually stopped at a stoplight, so it's kind of quiet, and you hear just, yeah. brrr, like, <laughs> hey. dude. He didn't say anything. Nothing. Or? No, like it's just like, hey, it's no big deal. I just farted. It's natural. Right. It's not my car, but whatever. Yeah. That's weird. So I couldn't wait to get him. I didn't smell anything. That's good. Yeah. You know. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still say my favorite fart story is Dan's fart story. <laughs> hey, man, are you fucking retarded? <laughs> I didn't drop the F-bomb. Oh, sorry. Because I was at my place of business, which <laughs> was GameStop at but the But you time. still said retarded. I did ask him <laughs> if he was... Yeah, I mean, he just farted out of nowhere. He's like, <laughs> he's like hey, there goes one of those my son a motorcycle. And I was like, I was like, dude, are you retarded? <laughs> and he's like, what? I'm like, are you retarded? He's like, no. I goes, what the hell are you doing? Like, don't be farting. Like, well, and then saying mouse on a motorcycle. Yeah, I, was like, I can understand if you're retarded and you're farting like i get it but <laughs> but the, people should know like dan actually means that from like a medical standpoint like yeah are you having some sort of mental illness that is not allowing your butt to close <laughs> yeah like not like are hey, you fucking retard <laughs> which i it's just so good right oh it's so great uh all right we have a review a new beer review from our friend uh up in canada a sir food savage we got uh some booze news to talk about a great well hopefully great sounds great bullpen beer to get to so let's kick things off with the beer review from uh canada a at sir food Sur- <laughs> savage not service savage uh on the instagrams <laughs> What's up, gents? It's the official Canadian Sir Food Savage coming at you with a killer cupcake panda. 
Brought to you by a local brewery to me, The Flying Monkeys Craft Brewery out of Barrie, Ontario, Canada. It is a double IPA with pandan leaves, and I looked this up because I did not know what a pandan leaf was. Apparently it's used in Asian cooking. And we're rocking an 8.3 ABV. It does say one US pint on the can, so I do believe you could possibly get this in the United States. I Do not quote me on that. It may be there, it may not, but if you do you see it? I'd pick it up because I'm about to take my, my sip here. Oh, this is like candy. Oh, yeah. Give it a little sniff. It smells like vanilla. Tastes like candy. This is a killer cupcake panda. If you can get it, I would get it. It is delicious. Do not drink like eight of these unless you have a sweet tooth. I'd probably compare it to the Arrow Lodge Brewing Best Buds. It's like a sweet IPA. It's, it's a double. So it is the 8.3. So I would not have a like six of these it'll mess you up real good but no the flying monkeys brewery killer cupcake panda is actually delicious i would i'm gonna go have my other can right now thanks boys i hope he appreciates the music that i chose for him correct he's also the one that told me that you can return alcohol in canada Oh, that's right. We talked to a few shows ago about that. So yeah, it's funny too because uh, his sir food savage. I thought we were gonna have some graduation music to go with his review. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, but he is a uh, Canadian, so yeah, he's more of a Steve Nash kind of guy. That's true. The Mountie. <laughs> yeah, don't don't let him carry the your Mountie. luggage. The Mountie. <laughs> <laughs> the Mountie, eh? That's right. Uh, thank you, sir food savage. Go follow him on the Instagrams. All one word. Um, Especially if you like Canadian beers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we give him cool. shit, but uh, I wish I could return alcohol. Yeah, and that's cool that he gave us a review on a Canadian beer, because all we really know is Labatt Blue, and that's embarrassing. That is true. We had this discussion a couple weeks back that like all we know from Canada is Labatt Blue yeah. and uh, whatever the beer in Strange Brew was. Yeah, and that's like <laughs> if you like, oh, all I know about the Yanks is the Budweiser. Right. And like, oh no, that's a terrible representation yes. of our country. And apparently they transported back to 1922. <laughs> <laughs> all I know about those Yanks is the Budweiser. I know, huh? That was a terrible impression. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder if we can set up a trade and have some Canadian beer. I should talk to him about that. Yeah. yeah. Drink a little north of the border. Yeah, educate us. Yeah, we need to be educated. Uh, old Timmy Word of the Week, Muck Spout. Muck spout one word someone who swears a lot oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. i like this one yeah uh this could go well with last week's too like that fustelarian was such a muck spout <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> i've already used fustelarian twice <laughs> i like it <laughs> we just need to start using it at work and i think that's the way to do things yep clients call like oh stop being such a muck spout <laughs> but I guess if they're swearing at you, you've, you've probably fucked up pretty good. That's true. Uh, someone who is probably not a muck spout. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. It is that time indeed. Our Beer Babe of the Week goes by the name of L. Hayes, and you can find that's letter L. And you can find her on the grams at, all one word, Hoppy Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. In this one, she is drinking a tasty beer from High Branch Brewing. Uh, it's a hazy IPA, and she is enjoying the purple can, it looks like. Yeah, it's very purple. Yeah, it's very purple. That's a, that's a bright can. Uh, so do yourselves a favor. Make sure you're following at Hoppy Hayes on the grams. I think you'll be glad you did. Gentlemen, are we ready to uh, make that call? It's about that time. Yes. Is it about that time? All right, let's uh, replenish our pitching staff here and make a call with the pen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. This is quite chocolate. Oh, man, this is dessert over here. This, this smells like... It smells like Hershey syrup. Mm. It does. This thing is uh, about as black as you can get on a beer. I mean, this thing is pitch. Yep. It's like a trillion midnights. Yeah. Smells <laughs> trillion midnights. Smells <laughs> like Hershey syrup to me. Uh, this is Untitled Arts collaboration with Yazoo Brewing Company called Fudge Stickle. 12%, 65 IBUs. That's all you say. <laughs> As a 4-2-3 on Untapped and a 93 on Beer Advocate, they say it's an imperial stout brewed with Hershey syrup. Well, there you go. Yep. Chalaca syrup, Dominican, Madagascan, and Guatemalan cacao nibs. 
uh, from Nashville-based Olive Sinclair for an intense chocolatey flavor. Contains lactose and vanilla. Ooh. So a little gimmicky, not unlike last week. Last week was the key lime. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, how do we feel about this one, especially in comparison to the key lime? I'm loving the cacao nibs. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very sweet. Yes, yeah, very Woo. sweet. Very, I mean, wow. It's yes. like drinking Hershey sh- Hershey syrup. It really is, but like twelve percent is gonna fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I just had my first sip. That is chocolate. Yes, it is. Wow. I I'm glad at w- that we're sharing this because uh, a full can of this might be a little much on the sweet factor. I think so. Yeah. I think if you drink like a whole can, you need like a shot of whiskeys and another <laughs> shot for diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Sir Food Savage just had a really sweet beer, and now we're having this one. It's a sweet beer kind of day. Woo! This mm-hmm. is sweet. I will give them credit. It definitely tastes like a fudge sickle. Oh, yeah. It is chocolatey AF. It is cho- Yeah. Uh, and you can taste the booze, but it's not 12% tasty. No, it's not. It's mm-hmm. sneaky. It's a little dangerous. It is. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a trip, man. It's, it even feels kind of sticky in a way. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, like Ooh, it's... Wee. Yeah, like <laughs> super sweet. It's almost like someone just melted some chocolate in here. Yeah, that's really what it tastes like. Yeah. It's like it is, boozy yeah. melted chocolate. It really yeah. does. Pour this on your ice cream. Ooh, you oh, know that would fuck. actually make it better. Oh. Yes, it would kind of even out some of the sweetness. Uh-huh. Like pour it on some good vanilla. Mm. God, I wish I had vanilla ice cream. We <laughs> we totally pause the show right now. <laughs> I, know, I put my my cup away just in case. I was like, maybe it's going to score. Get no, some vanilla. Oh, we don't. Ha- I, let me tell you, if there's one thing I know that's in the house, it, it's beer and ice cream and leftover don't. wedding cake. Or uh, there is one cupcake left. <laughs> oh, there we <laughs> but go. But it's also chocolate, so I don't think no. that that wouldn't go yeah, well. I can't yeah. do that. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm thinking. I just yeah. I don't think anything. I, okay. I could very quickly make whipped cream. I have heavy cream. How about that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about it. Yeah, turn this into like a, a shake or something. That's so, right. Uh, this is good, but I could not do a lot of it. No way. Yeah, I think like a taster size pour is perfect. Yeah. Like two ounces of it. Yeah, right, yeah. It's, you need to taste it just to taste it. And it is good in Ooh. small doses, but good Lord. This will fuck your shit up, too. True that. <laughs> good Lord. 12%, baby. All right. Uh, we got some booze news to get to. If, hopefully, I can still read after this. <laughs> extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Uh, we had the uh, quote-unquote healthy beer from Dogfish Head a, a month or so ago. Oscar Blues has released Oney, a 100-calorie hazy IPA. Looking forward to that. <laughs> hopefully, it's better than the Dogfish Head one because... Boy, was that garbage. Uh-oh. What a trip. Yeah. Hazy IPA. Mm-hmm. Good news, everybody. A German court has ruled that hangovers are, in fact, an illness. Ah, see? <laughs> so Mike, Michael Jordan was sick. <laughs> right? That's right. It's true. <laughs> he really was sick. He was sick. Mm-hmm. And that's, of course, Germany ruled that. Yeah. They would have yeah. to. And, and Who you else? Know, yeah. And you know the story's true because it's coming from CNN. Oh, we all, there you go. Right. <laughs> the higher regional court of Frankfurt made the decision in a case against an unnamed company that sold anti-hangover products. The ruling was handed down just as the nation's legendary Oktoberfest is getting away. According to the court, any minor disturbance in the body's normal functioning is considered an illness. Hangovers, which manifest in headaches, nausea, and exhaustion, and often regret and temporary disdain for booze, though those typically go undiagnosed, deviate <laughs> from the bodily norm. Therefore, the court ruled a hangover is an illness. They do not occur as a result of the natural ups and downs of the body, but as a result of the consumption of alcohol, a harmful substance, the court said. I don't like that part. <laughs> the company then uh, the company then cannot claim that its powders and shots can cure hangovers, the court ruled. So this is all about a company with hangover, quote-unquote, cures, cannot say that it cures a hangover now that it's considered an illness. So what do they say it cures? Well, you can't say it cures. <laughs> you can say it aids or helps oh. or you know works to fight against or whatever, but you cannot say that it cures a hangover anymore oh, okay, okay. In, in Germany. But uh, on the flip side, I don't see why you couldn't call out sick for a day if you have a hangover now. They The court they, has ruled it's an illness. It's true. So... And I don't think they can ask you what your sickness is anyways. That's true. Yeah. And now it's actually classified as an yeah, illness. So uh, 
Drink away, everybody. And I'd rather come in sick than hung over sometimes. Oh, yeah. Come on. Sometimes. Oh, man. Even today, I was a little toasty at work. And uh-huh. It wasn't horrendous, but it was a wine hangover, which oh, just meant I had a headache all day. Yeah. Like, I wasn't... Dra- you know, like some hangovers where you just like can hardly move. It wasn't like that. Just headache all day. Ugh. Wine will get you. True that. That's what I get for drinking wine. Oh, man. Oh, what else? Uh, Natty Light Seltzer becomes the official hard seltzer of the Big 12 Conference. Nice. Yes. College students rejoice. <laughs> the official hard <laughs> seltzer. Yes. So not the official drink, just the official hard seltzer. Of the Big 12, so yeah. So there's still an official beer, still an official... Theoretically, yeah. Uh, interesting. You oh. know, uh, Natty Light is owned by AB, so theoretically, uh, Budweiser or Bud Lighter or Nat- Natty Light itself could be the official beer of Big 12. Still knows? a monopoly. Still a monopoly. Uh, truly Hard Seltzer, on the other hand, named the official Hard Seltzer of the NHL. Oh, there oh we go. take that. Yeah. yeah. Suck on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cigar City Brewing and the Tampa Bay Lightning, speaking of hockey, announced a partnership uh, Cigar City will be uh, posted up shop right next to the arena there. They'll also be offering some of their beers within the arena. That's pretty pimp. Yeah. So I guess if you're going to have to go to a hockey game, <laughs> you at least have some good beer while yeah. you're doing it. Might as well get lit up by Cigar City. Mm-hmm. You know it's going to stay cold, though. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> that is true. If there's one sporting event that you can count on your beer staying cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miller Coors is going to launch... Four new beers in 2020. All right. Yeah, get ready, everybody, because here comes Blue Moon Light Sky, a wheat <laughs> citrus beer, checking in at 95 calories and 4%. Oh, jeez. Woo. Yeah. Uh, look out for Coors Peak, a 3.8% 92-calorie beer made with organic ingredients. Oh, man. In three different flavors. <laughs> uh, get your drinking pants on for Line and Kugel's Spritzen. A 93-calorie mixer with flavored seltzer uh, at 4.2%. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> and their Keystone Light brand will also debut Key Lightful, a raspberry lime-flavored beer focused on attracting 21 to 24-year-old drinkers. Yeah, I thought they are still doing the stone thing where they're copying stone. <laughs> they're going to come out with a beer called Fatherless Asshole or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, or fatherless boasting person. Yeah, boast, yeah. <laughs> boasting person. Yeah. Oh, God. That would be great. Yeah. I could see that happening. And they too. should. Might as well at this point. They're putting like everything a, else. Put a happy angel on there or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, also, Coors is going to launch in November. If, if those weren't good enough for you, they'll be launching Coors Edge. This November, a non-alcoholic beer. Oh, Lord. Yeah. As if Coors didn't already taste no like water. No kidding. Yeah. Now you really are getting water. They're making it worse. I didn't think they could make it worse, but now they have. Mission accomplished. Yes. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> right? What what, uh, what what fucking pulse do they have their, their finger on right now? Um, apparently the AA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Right. It's like, this is what the people want. Yeah. Hey, hey, Fred, you're our VP of sales. Why don't you hit over to the AA meeting and see what they want over there? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Well, Bob, they want the uh, the non-alcoholic stuff. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, man. I'm telling I mean, you. Coors alone would make people stop drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you find me hammered off of Coors, you could send me to an AA meeting. <laughs> oh, man. You know I've hit rock you, bottom. You desperate problem there. Yeah, yeah, definitely hit rock bottom. With these geniuses point. behind big beer, it's like if they can just get that Teflon done. What was that? That It was uh, Samuel Adams and somebody else teamed up. Who oh, Dogfish it? Head. That's right. Yeah. They can make that a little stronger in this year You know, or next year. Build it up with somebody else. They could really take over. They might have a chance to... To give them a run, man. Yeah, as long as they don't push that disgusting uh, healthy beer from. Oh, that's vision. true. Damn it! Everything else they do is great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck Coors is thinking, but oh my god, yeah, they need to focus on that lawsuit with Budweiser. True that. About the corn syrup ads. <laughs> uh, the U.S. craft brewing industry apparently contributes seventy nine billion dollars to the U.S. economy. I'm, You're welcome. I think yeah, I think we're a good like eight percent of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just in this room alone. I think so. Uh, the top five states, this is in 2018 in uh, order of contribution. Number five, Florida at $3.6 billion. Oh, damn. Number four, New York at 4.1. Mm-hmm. Number three, Tejas, 5.1. Number two, Pennsylvania at 6.3. Oh, yeah. And coming in at number one, That's leaps right. and abounds above everybody else. $9 billion 
worth of craft beer buying Holy shit. 2018, of course, is the in and out state itself, California. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. No White Castle here. That's right. Yes, all in and out. Yep. <laughs> double doubles. Yes. <laughs> double double animal style. Uh, these days, I do also get them protein style. Oh, do you really? No yeah. buns. No buns. Get some animal fries. Yeah. The only carbs. Oh, man. Oh, right. I love the animal fries. God damn. Gangster. When you're stoned, <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing better. Few, few things in life better than that. Yeah. Very, very few. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is interesting, though. The top five states, 21 plus, in order of output per capita. So, you know, depending on the population. Number five, Maine. Six hundred and thirty dollars, Pennsylvania. Number four, six hundred fifty-six dollars uh, per person per capita. Mm. Uh, number three, Oregon, six seventy-four. Number two, Vermont at seven fifty-five, and then number one, Colorado at seven hundred eighty dollars. Uh, We're not on that list because our uh, you know our population so large. Yeah, right? in California. So true that. Uh, go California. We rock. Yep, we drink a lot of booze. We're fighting the good fight. We are. We really are fighting the good craft beer fight mm-hmm. um speaking of the good craft beer fight we've talked a lot lately about breweries closing and we'll talk about one in a second but first i want to mention brew dog usa is on track to double their sales in 2019 from 2018 that's interestingly good news when everyone else is closing their doors and and shuttering it's it's uh, i'm surprised that they would double their sales in one year that's that's pretty good that's, yeah pretty good mm-hmm. uh and arcadia brewing back to the negative officially seizes operations uh, it's the 17th closure brewery closure oh, in Michigan since last August. So in just over a year, 17 breweries in Michigan alone have closed. Bummer. Yeah. Come on, Michigan. Yeah. All right. Where Come are on. you on the list? Yeah. yeah. Pull your lives together. No kidding. <laughs> you got Start. some drinking to do. Jeez. Yeah. So uh, never good to see that happen. And we've actually had Arcadia on the show before. I'm trying to think of the name. It's going to come to me. It's got like a guy's face on the can. I think it's called like Hop Mouth or something. Anyways, uh, I don't. Ex- it's been well over a year. I don't expect minute. anybody to remember that. I can't remember what happened at my wedding, but I can remember the beers we had over a year ago. <laughs> no, right? That's why my wife should never listen to this show. <laughs> I'd get in so much trouble. Yes. What, do you, what do you mean you remember a beer from a year and a half ago? <laughs> you can't even tell me what happened at the ceremony. Eh, sorry. <laughs> I know your friend talked a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> was that out loud? <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, yes. That's it for us. Thanks, you all. Thanks, you all. Good Lord. <laughs> It's twelve percent, people. <laughs> this fudge sickle is twelve yes. percent. It's very chocolatey. Uh, it and chocolatey is AF, as the kids say. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking along. Uh, we are the Unfiltered Gentlemen. Find us at theunfilteredgentlemen dot com, at the Unfiltered Gentlemen on social media, except for Twitter at Unfiltered Gents. You can also leave us a drunk voicemail. Drunk dial us eight zero five five three eight beer. That is two three three seven. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about what happened at Integrin's Oktoberfest. Oh, yeah. Full rundown on that. So, in the meantime, I hope you all stay very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.